God is making his appearance for the first time in the world. This is what Christmas was about. Christmas was about God making his debut unto man. And of course, the birth of <coughs> Christ was the beginning of what God was trying to accomplish in his son. And sometimes we get caught off guard trying to figure out what church and our morality and our need to conform to this image that Christ presented. We get confused about what what's this all about? And I, I thought about this week as I looked at, uh, we've been in, in, the, in the book of Luke kind of making our uh, pilgrimage with Jesus relevant to all mankind. And Luke, Luke kind of tells the story. It was told to him as he saw it. He was there in the beginning. He was on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus, after he had finished his work on the cross, appeared to him, uh, and on this road, he told all the scriptures. And so Luke has an inside view of what Jesus intended for the world to know about what he came for. And so as we continue in the book of Luke, trying to figure out what it was that God was doing. I mean, is here, here we come to church trying to sustain our spirituality. We're trying to be with a group of people that are in different places in their pilgrimage, and we come together as a unit as as one body trying to make sense of it all i mean that's what we're here for we're, we're here to uh renew our our souls and our spirits in in the process of uh life as we are dealing with it in our homes and in our communities and in a sense we're saying what's it all about what is this Christian endeavor all about? How did Jesus coming into this life, what was it all about? And, and in a sense, uh, we started before Christmas with words from the word of life. And what this ends up being is we're following Jesus in his revelation being pre-existent with God now he has become a human and he's faced with the same things that you and I are faced with every day sustaining life uh, keeping uh, the bills paid doing all the stuff that needs to be done physically we eat, we drink, we do all that we do trying to keep our heads above water. And Jesus coming into this world was the changing mechanism that God put in place for this world to be corrected, for this world to function as God intended it to function when he made it. And so I, I've endeavored to, to look at Christ from that perspective. What, what's this all about? What is this God changing the world from the way it is now to what he intends it to be forever? This isn't it. And so Jesus was trying to show the world the way to get this world back to where God intended it to be. And the world has, 
had tried for uh, to do good things in this world. Uh, and we'll say that the human being, even though he was fallen, there was still a need for the world to go on and function. And so man, without God, tried to fix the world morally, ethically, uh, politically, in all ways, the world was trying to make this place as good as it could be. And God said, you can't fix this world. And so he sent his son into this world to fix the world. We have seen in the last 2,000 years that with Christ, in the world, with the church, even in the position of being ruler in Rome, the church could not morally, socially change the world. It, it hasn't fixed the world. The church isn't going to just take over and be all that God wanted this world to be. And he's shown that the only way for this world to be right is for his son to come back and reign and rule all things. And Jesus came to prepare the world for, number one, his spirit to be in the world. And it can only happen when one person accepts Jesus Christ. That's the beauty of Christianity. It's, it's one person at a time. That's what Jesus came to do, was to bring you and me together into this place <coughs> that God wants all the world to be. And so as we look at these words, and we, as we look at what Jesus did, we're putting in place in our own minds, in our own hearts, where we are with him in what he's doing. And that's what, that's what the Lord has kind of called me to do, is to help us move together and yet move individually, to be all that we can be in what God is doing. <clears throat> That's, that's what we're about. And so, as I, last week, I, I, it was sort of like a revelation to me. I, I, I always pictured Jesus as God, supernaturally, just, you know, he had a, a, his bag of magic tricks, so to speak, that he could just pull out something and, and whoop, fixed everything. But I saw in, in what happened at his baptism, Jesus, even though he was God, he didn't operate as though he were God. He was a human in flesh and blood dealing with the same things you and I deal with. The temptation of Satan, I, I always pictured that Satan was manifesting himself to Jesus as the devil that he was, as a physical devil in a semi-spiritual world that he could go from one to the other. But it was like Jesus dealt with him just like you and me. He's sitting here on my shoulder talking to me and trying to get me to Get in the flesh. And Jesus basically said, get behind me, Satan. I know who you are. I see your schemes and device. Get out of here. And he left him. And from there, it began his work of ministry. And I, I want to stay as close to the scenario that, that, that Luke has led us on. And, and Luke was probably like I said, trying to, I, I want all of you who believe to know what Jesus did. 
I'm going to tell you the story, and then you have to deal with it yourself. And so these words were to those who believed, to those who were looking to know what God was doing. And so it was kind of exciting for me. And this, this is, I'm on a pilgrimage too. I, I wish that I had all things up here, but I don't. I'm, I'm in process. And so just like you, I'm not a finished work yet. God is still doing stuff in me. He's still teaching me and showing me what he's doing. So it's like every day is a new adventure. I'm not going back and digging up old stuff and recycling it. Today's just like the first day. Let's, let's see where we are today and build on where I am today. And so Jesus, in, in verse 14 of Luke 4, he says, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. So after the baptism and after the 40 days of temptation, Jesus returned to Galilee. And news of him went out throughout the surrounding region. Jesus was healing everybody that he came in contact with. And word had gotten out all over Galilee. Galilee was up closer to Samaria, the northern kingdom, where Israel used to be, but Judah was in Jerusalem. And then Samaria and the northern kingdom went into exile. I mean, they, they, Samaria, Syria came down and took them away. And the Samaritans, Samaria, that area, that region, was still now a part of Israel, of, of, of Judah, and the kingdom of Israel. But Jesus was up in the northern regions, and that's why he went to the woman of the well, because he was up there in the Samaritan region in Samaria, where the old kingdom used to be. And so he was revealing, and he was he had come back in the power of God, and he was healing all who came to him. And, and I said last week, I don't know where Jesus came in contact with the Word of God. And it was like the Lord showed me this week where Jesus got connected with the Word of God. And it says in Luke, and he taught in their synagogue, being glorified by all. And then in verse 16, it says, So he came to Nazareth. And remember, Jesus was born. I mean, he was from Nazareth. Mary and Joseph lived in Nazareth. They, that's where Jesus grew up. And so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, oh, that's it. Wait a minute. Jesus had a custom. When he grew up in Nazareth, every Saturday, guess what happened? He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Oh, okay. So Jesus, when he was young, and we'll say when he was a young man in his 20s, he went into the synagogue every Saturday. He went to church. He was a Jew. He was in the synagogues. They they didn't have their their Saturday church was just like us here at Lake. He went in to Lake and he stood up and he read from the scripture. And it says in verse 17, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. So the the priest, the rabbi who was in charge of the synagogue, took out a scroll, 
and handed it to him. Uh, took out a book of the Bible, of the Old Testament, and handed it to Jesus. And he had opened the book. He found the place where it was written. So if you get the picture here, Jesus had, had made it his practice every Saturday, every Sabbath, to go into the synagogue and he had dialogue with the rabbi, the, the person over his, his local pastor, if you will, who was in charge of the synagogue in, in Nazareth. And so Jesus, by his devotion to Israel and to do what was right, went to church every Saturday, every Sunday. It's just like you and I would, every Sunday, I showed up. That's what we do. We come, we show up. I, I don't know what God has me here for, but I'm coming. And every day that Jesus was in the synagogue, he, the rabbi, saw his heart. And it was his custom to read from the Word of God in the synagogue. He would come and read the Word of God to the people. That's what Jesus did from the time that he was old enough to be in a respectable position. He had gained acceptance in the synagogue as the rabbi handed him the scroll. Now, I don't know where he learned to read. I, you know, it's not like you go to school every day when in this time Jesus had to pick it up by what he did. So he learned how to read, reading the word of God in the synagogue. And that was his practice. That's what, that's what I got. I just, it just like it opened my mind. I saw what Jesus did. He just did what we do. I, I went to Sunday school. I sat under the rabbis. I sat under the Sunday school teachers. I learned the stories of Jesus. And Jesus learned the word of God from being doing the stuff he did faithfully every day. That's what we're here for today, just like what Jesus did. It was his custom. And that's what Luke shows us from this. And Jesus stood up in their midst. And, and verse 18 says, he started reading from Isaiah. And it was Isaiah uh, 61, 1. And it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now remember, he'd been reading every Sabbath for no telling how long. And he, it was his custom to get up and read the Word of God. So how did he know the Word of God? He, he read. That, I'm sure that they started out with Genesis, and then they went to Exodus, and then they went to Deuteronomy, and Numbers, and Leviticus. And Jesus read, and as he read it, it was like the Word became him. Just like you and me, we hear these words over and over. And we think, why am I doing this? And the Spirit takes these words and, and He brings them to life in us. And so Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. Can you imagine somebody just getting up and saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And what, what is he doing? I'm to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, 
to proclaim liberty to the captive, recovery of sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And I'm sure everybody's thinking, what's that mean? What, what's going on here? And he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And, and I've said this in the past, that when Jesus said these words, he stopped at acceptable year of the Lord. Because the rest of that was dealing with the book of Revelation. And from that verse on, it wasn't time yet for God's judgment to be upon the earth. This was the time that Jesus was revealing himself and the plan of God about the kingdom of God, about the Holy Spirit that was to come. Do you, do you realize that the Holy Spirit in you is the fulfillment of the promise of God? to the world. It's in each one of us. The Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead, that was with him when he went throughout Israel healing all who were sick, restoring and doing all these things that he just said. The same Spirit that was in Jesus personally that enabled him to do what he did. As I said, Jesus didn't do any miracles before his baptism. And the only things that he did after his baptism were the things that God showed him to do. What is it that you and I are doing? What do we do every day? Think about it. What, what is our life and, and all that we do about? It is about us, each one of us personally, fulfilling the same thing that Jesus did, we are doing. Jesus said it's important for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, he cannot come. See, what God is doing is changing the world one person at a time. Fortunately, God can go all over the world and work in many individuals simultaneously. Now, it, it's beautiful how God can take a crowd of people. Billy Graham, I think he realized at some point in his ministry, this is bigger than Billy Graham. Billy Graham realized that God was using him just like he did Jesus. And he was able to get a 100,000 people together at one time and speak just like I am here with you. He was making them aware that God was doing something. And it started with us being born again. Individually, each one of us must be born of the Spirit. But Jesus came into this world as one person, bringing the knowledge of God and who he is, and the awareness of him to those who were observing. And so that's what happened here. And marvel at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Can you imagine hearing what I'm saying for the first time? That, that this Jesus stuff is real. God became a human being. His name was Jesus. And, and he who had no sin died in order that those who believe that he was the Son of God would receive the Spirit of God. But the thing is, you cannot believe this unless the Spirit is quickening your spirit and your mind to believe it. 
The spirit of this world is saying, that's a bunch of garbage. If I start speaking like that, you, you get tense. Oh, this Jesus stuff doesn't work. What? Yeah, it does. It's real. It's alive. It's happening right now to me. And it's happening to you right now. And God is awakening us. Hey, you know, you guys can make a difference in this world. You are the ones who are going to go out and convince others that this God stuff is real. God has me here quickening in you the truth. The truth is God is alive and well on planet Earth. He has given us His Spirit and has made us alive unto Him. We are His people called by His name, sent to do His will in this world. I cannot reach the people in your families, in your realm of exposure, but you can. You are actively working every day, bringing forth the knowledge of God and His Son to all those in your family, to all those in your reach, and God is changing the world through you with. I, I had Jesus says these words to those who were there at the time. It goes on to say, verse 22 says, So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said to him, Is not this Joseph, son? This guy, this isn't God. This is Joseph's son. So the world is already at work. Hey, you're not, you're just a human being. We know you, you're the carpenter. You, you just make benches and, and chairs. We know who you are. And he said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. <coughs> Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, that, that's where Jesus went about and healed all the people in Capernaum. Do also here in your own country. And so Jesus is in Nazareth now, or he was raised there. And then he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. When I go back to Lamar, Missouri, they see old Roy, that Boozy, Boozy Betts, we remember you. You were drunk every week. Yeah, we know you. Nothing good can come from you. And so no prophet is accepted in his own town. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. And when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout the whole land, but to none of them was Elijah sent except Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a widow, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha and the prophet. And none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. He wasn't even a Jew. And God healed him of leprosy. <coughs> and so all the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. You're, you're, we know who you are, Jesus. You're the son of Joseph. And, and the beginning of the spirit of this world and this age against the Son of God began. And they rose up and they thrust him out of the city. They took Jesus and they railed him out of the city right there. And they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him over the cliff. 
They were going to kill Jesus right there. We, we know who you... You're Joseph. Don't, don't come in here trying to preach that stuff to me. We know who you are. That's the resistance that you will get even in your own family. It's going to happen. And yet the truth and the knowledge of God is what you felt just a few minutes ago. You're going, it's true, it's real. And then the world says, no, it's not. And they come against you. And then passing through the midst of them, he went his way. He just, it wasn't time yet. But that same spirit that attacked Jesus in his own city is the same spirit that attacks us in our families and where we work, where we play. And there will be those who will receive and God will open up heaven for those who receive. And there is sometimes it will be that you will say things and do things and it will not be received. And you say, okay, just we quit. We won't say anymore. And then there will be a time later when the door will open and the light will come on and you'll know that it's time. It's called receptivity. We are looking for those who are receptive to the knowledge of God. And when you find someone, you pour it in. And when they're not, you shut it off. It's simple. That's how the Spirit works in us. And He is at work. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank You that You are at work in us. We are a work, Father. We are in progress right now. And Lord, You are preparing us to go places we've never been. To say things we've never said. To do things we've never done. You're preparing us. You're making our hearts ready to do your will. And Lord, we thank you that you are able to cause the rocks to cry out and worship you. But Lord, you'd much rather have people. And so Lord, help us to make those ready to worship you. Send us people, Father, who are wanting to know the truth about you. And we just submit ourselves to you. We resist the devil, and he will flee from us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.